Mercury was founded some 30 years ago. Uh, the company actually went public in 1998 on the, on the NASDAQ. Uh, I joined Mercury in November 2007 to do a turnaround and transformation of the company, which we've done very successfully. Uh, today, you know, we're a best of breed provider of commercially developed subsystems for sensor processing applications for the defense, intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance market. And our subsystems can be found on some of our nation's most important programs and platforms. Um, today, we've got approximately 750 people around the world. You know, one of the things that we did very early on in the turnaround and transformation was to really segment our market differently than what we had in the past. Uh, and so we focused really on the globalization of the defense electronics market, uh, which has really proven to be very successful in terms of growing our total addressable market. So as an OEM provider of very specialized sensor processing subsystems to the large primes, uh, you know, what we've been able to do is to invest in new technologies and capabilities that have largely been an enabler to our customers as they've been seeking to export their technologies and capabilities overseas. Now, one of the challenges around globalization for, uh, for Mercury, in particular being a defense company, is that many of our technologies are somewhat classified and, uh, and you know, our, our innovation needs to be protected as those technologies are deployed overseas. However, I think we've been able to do that very successfully and you know, since uh, we started to focus on the defense business, we've grown that defense core by over 60% and we're now looking to actually accelerate that growth rapidly. Innovation is one of the keys to our success. Uh, in fact, our marketing tagline is actually where challenges drive innovation. Uh, and you know, in effect what we do is we solve very difficult sensor processing challenges that can't be solved with off-the-shelf commercial computing. Um, a recent development has been for us to actually create a new customer facing business unit and this is largely a uh, consultative engineering services business where we've got some of the smartest people in our organization and in essence what we're doing is engaging with our customers and helping, solve, uh, helping them solve some of their most difficult challenges. Let me give you an example. Uh, you know, we've had a one recently where a customer came to us and said, look, we need a very, very dense digital storage subsystem for an airborne you know, intelligence surveillance reconnaissance application. So our team basically engaged with the customer and we created a 92 terabyte digital storage subsystem, but we did it in a fifth of the price and a third of the time scales of the in-house engineering organizations of our customers. To put that in context, the whole Library of Congress can be actually stored in nine terabytes. So we've done something that is ten times the size, and we done it. We did it in less than a year. So, uh, and that actually, that product line has now become a pretty significant growth driver for us. I read a lot. Uh, you know, I think I've got a great board of directors that I can turn to. You know, I've got a lot of friends from business school that are run both public as well as private companies. And I recently joined a public company CEO peer networking group, which I've actually found pretty helpful. Uh, on the personal side of things, I actually am from Northern England originally. Uh, I left school at 16 to go and work in the shipyard in my hometown. Uh, but I realized pretty quickly that I didn't particularly want to work in the shipyard for the rest of my life. Uh, so whilst I was working, I was actually going to college uh, five nights a week. I actually went on and did a degree in digital systems engineering um, and practiced being an engineer for a couple of years before moving into sales and then completing an MBA at Harvard Business School. Post MBA, I ran a couple of major product businesses, was involved in some M&A activity before becoming a public company CEO in my early 30s. So it's a lot of background to me, but uh, in hindsight, I think what I learned along the way and really with respect to leadership is some of the leadership uh, culture or leadership attributes that we value here at Mercury. And, you know, the first one is really vision. And you know, I think it's all about really not being afraid to think big uh, or to think differently as well as innovating. You know, authentic, uh, you know, I'm a pretty informal, hopefully transparent and hopefully uh, self-aware person. So really what you see is what you get. And I think authenticity in business and from a leadership perspective is important. Uh, courage, you know, I think uh, confidence and self-belief 
are absolutely critical in terms of leading teams uh, as well as to leading effectively. Uh, leadership by example, I think everyone you know, talks about that. But I think it's important to act on both a personal commitment to results, openness, honesty, and fairness in the business environment. And then finally, calmness. And you know, I think someone told me that only an English guy would actually have calmness in terms of his leadership attributes. But I tell you, it's really important. I've done a couple of public company turnarounds now, and you know, I think the CEO needs to believe in and expect in the positive outcome and results. And you know, when things get tough, I think a CEO needs to show calmness and composure. So that would really be my, my fifth one. Uh, finally, I would say going back to kind of my days in the shipyard, uh, you know, coming obviously coming from pretty humble roots, and I think it's given me the ability to basically de communicate and to deal with people very comfortably, it doesn't matter where they are in the organization, whether they're on the shop floor or to the chairman of the board. I think the culture is very strong. If I were to summarize, I would say that it's, it's really about winning and delivering improved financial results through teamwork. Uh, the culture has changed pretty radically since I joined the company. You know, they say that a culture is driven very uh, heavily by the leader of the organization. And you know, my former head of HR actually worked for Jack Welch, who was the, you know, the former CEO of GE for many years. And Craig actually uh, pushed me a lot to basically write down from a, from a cultural and from a values perspective the things that are important to me. And I did that, and you know, I think we use it in many different ways, probably the two most important of which are in relation to hiring as well as performance appraisals. And so you know, we'll select and grade people uh, largely on their ability to deliver results, which is the what. But the how is largely the cultures and the values of the organization, which are now deeply embedded within Mercury. I think I get to meet a lot of really interesting and different people, both internally and externally. Uh, I'm very competitive. I think I thrive on building high-performance teams that are able to deliver results. And finally, you know, I think I take a very active interest in basically working to help identify as well as to mentor some of the next generation of high-performance people within the organization. You know, my career has actually uh, advanced at a very rapid pace. You know, I was promoted to the board of a, uh, of a global telecommunications company in my early 30s and became a public company CEO in the U.S. in my mid-30s. Uh, as I look back at my career and kind of what's driven me to date, I think there are a couple of words that really are pretty important. Uh, the first is fearful and the second is fearless. And you know, it sounds kind of strange, but let me explain in a little bit more detail. So from a fearful perspective, I think from a very, very early age, uh, you know, I think you know, the fear of failure was a very uh, strong driver, uh, both in you know, sports or academia or, or as well as in the workplace. Put another way, I think it's that desire to win and doing everything that you need to become a winner. So, kind of that's the fearful side of things. The fearless, uh, you know, one of the people that, that once worked for me described me as, as kind of being fearless but without being reckless at the same time. And so, you know, that's about the ability to be able to jump into difficult situations to assess what's going on and to be able to build a team as well as a plan to deliver improved results quickly uh, and, and hopefully cost-effectively. So my advice, I think, to emerging leaders uh, and high potential managers would be to be, become you know, very self-motivated, focus on the things that are most impactful to the organization in terms of business results or financial results. I think too often middle management and organization get bogged down in day-to-day -day activities and lose sight of the actual results that the organization needs. I think the other thing going to the fearless is uh, looking for ways to basically contribute. You know, don't be afraid to actually jump into difficult situations. Uh, I think it shows a level of maturity and I think it shows a level of self-confidence that senior management respects. As your career grows, in my mind, there are really three things that I think are important. The first is that when looking for a new job or if you've been approached, to assess uh, deeply 
the cultural fit of you as an individual with the you know the organization or the target organization. I think the many times uh, when a, a hire fails, it's largely due to the lack of a cultural fit. I think the second is is that hire really smart people who love to win. Uh, and you know, the higher you get up in an organization, the, the easier it becomes to measure the results and the impact of an individual. And so hiring the best people is going to give you the biggest, greatest chance of success in your role going forward. And finally, I think that if you ever become a CEO, uh, focusing on the culture and values of what's important to you can make a really big difference as it results to your leadership style and how an organization goes about achieving its results. I think uh, continuing to innovate from a technical perspective, uh, I think ensuring that Mercury is a company that is easy to do business with, uh, delivering true business value to our customers as well as to our shareholders, and then finally providing a rewarding uh, environment for our employees to work in.